Welcome to the Ursea, a waterworld ravaged by an unknown cataclysm that has left remnants of humanity scattered across various islands and outcrops of rock. It's a world filled with the political machinations and ongoing betrayal by the different houses that run what's left of this oceanic wonderland. The Falconeer is, on the off chance you aren't already familiar with it, an open-world dogfighting game that sees you take on the role of the eponymous Falconeer, effectively an errant boy astride a flying mount whose role it is to do whatever it is your house demands of you. Presented through various chapters, the game's story sees you take on the role of different Falconeers for each house as you piece together events leading up to an attempted assassination of the Empress. There's just enough backstory for your character and the class to add a little bit of depth to the world, but all of that plays second fiddle to the Machiavellian machinations and political aspirations going on around you. The Falconeer was first released in 2020 for Xbox and PC, but now the game has finally flown into the PS4, PS5 and Switch with the Warrior Edition. The Warrior Edition contains all the game's previous DLC, including the latest expansion, Edge of the World, which adds new classes, mounts and some quest lines. It is, of course, also available as an upgrade for PC and Xbox owners. If you've played the Falconeer before, then you'll know what to expect from the DLC, as, ultimately, it's much of the same. For everyone else, the Falconeer drops you into the Ursi without much of the way of explanations. There isn't any form of hand-holding on how the game progresses, though this is rather linear in choosing your missions, and it doesn't tell you how to make the most out of the world's side quests, leveling, or how to even buff your warbird. Initially, this can be overwhelming, but in short order you'll figure it out, and be well on your way to sabotaging your allies in the name of self-interest, power, and profit. At the beginning of the game, after a brief prologue, you can immediately choose between the first three chapters, though each comes with its own recommended level, and it's best to follow them in order, to both level up and maintain any narrative continuity. Missions reward you with shards, the world's currency, and each house, and some locations, have shops to upgrade your equipment from, or purchase writs, which gives you the go-ahead to work side jobs for other settlements. The Edge of the World DLC adds three mini-campaigns and two new classes to the game, which can be accessed from any chapter. First-time players won't even be aware these classes are actually additional content it's so streamlined. The integration is seamless, and the new classes and their stats fall in line with the existing classes, which means you're never overpowered for the upcoming missions. If anything, you're rather vulnerable at first, until you start earning some shards, get used to the combat system, and can finally equip some better weapons. The new chapters, although not essential to Falconeer's overall experience, does take you to some new locations, and places a much larger emphasis on the world's more supernatural elements. When it comes to the basic gameplay loop, mastering the flight controls can take some time, especially when it comes to learning how to speed up and evade fire. Tracking enemies in combat is troublesome at first, but eventually gets easier when you soon realize that you can dash and turn at the same time, or that hovering quickly is the best way to keep targets in your sight as they zip around you. Ammunition for your default weapon can always be recharged by flying through lightning storms, though by far the best weapon, a Macross-like multi-missile attack, is only a once-off use for each mission. Combat ultimately tends to be rather simple though, adding to the game's arcade feel which was preferable the further into the campaign I progressed. Most battles end up with you and the enemy circling each other until one of you goes down. That said, there's a little bit of variety when dealing with warships or ground-based targets, as you can grab mines and perform bombing runs. Unfortunately, both the main missions and side quests are repetitive and comprised of simplistic go here, kill that, or escort that design. While there may be some epic dogfights aplenty, the simplistic mission design, and the lack of any truly epic fights, even when dealing with a massive kraken, felt at odds with the world's lore and the elaborate political plots. Most missions also require you to travel vast swathes of ocean to complete said simplistic tasks, and then fly back to your house again. Sure, there may be a zen-like level of relaxation during some of these periods, especially if you take your controls off the fingers and just watch your mount glide off on its own. The fast travel feature that lets you fly ahead to specific points is a welcome boon. One thing that constantly surprised me was the Falconeer's uneven and consistent difficulty. In theory, mission difficulty is rated by skulls, and you can go from a 1 skull mission, to a 4 skull mission, to a 2 skull mission, straight into a 6 skull mission. 
Coupled with the lack of mid-mission checkpoints, it's possible to find yourself replaying long scouting or escort sequences before finally engaging in the combat sequence you failed previously. Outside of these main story missions, you can go gallivanting aboard your mount across the Ursi to explore the world and take on those side quests or other basic jobs to earn more shards. However, and perhaps unexpectedly given this is an open world game, beyond admiring the stunning stylized visuals, there's actually very little to do in this large open seascape. Visually, the Falconeer is absolutely gorgeous. While the Ursi may be a giant ocean, full of outcrops of rock and towering mountains upon which settlements have been built, the stylized visuals and lighting, coupled with tiny details, turn what could have been a drab experience into a visually charming one. The rolling sea is constantly engaging to behold, whether it's dark and violent during a storm, or bathed in the sparkling glow of an orange sunset. Other ships and falconeers traipse across the world, and, if you get close enough, you'll find schools of fish and whales breaking the surface below. The soundtrack feels minimalist, but it's very atmospheric and moody, and enhances the visual experience. While the voice acting during main missions feels surprisingly well done and authentic, Playing on an Xbox Series S, you get the choice between a 60 frames per second higher resolution mode or silky smooth 120 frames per second mode with a softer image. However, regardless of which you choose, the game's art design stands out superbly. If you have the inclination, there's also a photo mode to document your exploration and adventures. Ultimately, the Falconeer's story wasn't quite what I was expecting, nor was the gameplay with its fun, combat, but simplistic mission design and lack of things to do within the open world. When it came to the story and setting, political machinations left me feeling a little cold, but on the other hand, the intriguing world design and lore kept me coming back for more.